bad state of a road. According to uh, many, with the coming of the rainy season, accessibility is almost an impossibility. Drivers and uh, passengers spend long hours on the road to arrive their destinations. Tired details in the following reports are compiled by Fon Quinta. Another nightmare for those traveling in and out of the northwest region of Cameroon. Few weeks into the start of the rainy season, an effect it has on the Bamenda Babaju stretch. <laughs> Passengers and road users now forced to push vehicles tucked in puddle due to the poor state of road that ought to have been maintained years back. Road users were left. The northwest region of Cameroon at about 4 p.m. on Sunday, March 20, 2021, they spent the night in cold as a 35-kilometer Babajuba Menda stretch has once again broken down. Reports from road users traveling in and out of the region that fateful they see they got stranded as movement of vehicles became practically impossible due to the poor state of road. With passengers now forced to push vehicles while others spend night in cold, government have maintained silence. The wait for the reconstruction of the Bamenda Babaju Highway has been described by many as an endless journey since works were officially launched by the Minister of Public Works on May 16, 2017. With the dilapidated state of road and government silence, it is the wish of road users that the 35-kilometer stretch still begging for the attention from government gets an appropriate response. After the uh, Garwa Central Market, three buildings were reduced to ashes in uh, Kusiri in the far north region of uh, the country. The fire incident raised uh, three buildings in the market and the arrival of uh, firefighters from uh, Jamina limited the damages according to uh, uh, many details with Audrey Zatsa. Les commerçants du Grand Nord ont entamé la semaine en larmes ce 22 mars au marché central de Kousseri, l'un des plus grands espaces marchands du Grand Nord. Leurs boutiques et compartiments de différents hangars ont été consumés par les flammes. Sur les lieux, de nombreux dégâts matériaux ont enregistré. Les restes jonchent le sol. L'origine de cet incendie est encore inconnue. D'après les riverains, l'incendie a été signalé autour de 18h28. minutes. L'arrivée de la Légion des sapeurs-pompiers de la ville de N'Djamena par deux fourgons sur les lieux a permis à maîtriser les flammes. Les dispositions ont été prises pour sécuriser toutes les boutiques qui étaient aux alentours. Cet incendie de plus dans les marchés du Grand Nord survient quelques jours seulement après que deux autres aient réduit en cendres, le marché central de Garoua et le marché des poissons. court circuit accident Défaut de sécurité ou incendie criminel, plusieurs hypothèses circulent concernant ces incendies qui ravagent les marchés dans le pays. Minister of Public Service and Administrative Reforms Joseph Lay is on a three-day walking visit to the west and the northwest region of the country where he will meet or he met with stakeholders in the public sector to evaluate simplified administrative procedure. He was in the west region yesterday and was equally in Bamenda earlier today. Details in the following report. Minister of Public Service and Administrative Reforms, Minister Joseph Lee, met with stakeholders of the public service in Bafulsam yesterday to fine-tune the possibility of decentralizing the oral part of examinations into public service down to regions and divisions in the country. He also talked about the evaluation of the establishment of a simplified administrative procedure and the possible treatment of documents online to resolve the difficulties and hordes faced within sectors recently, laying emphasis on discipline within the public sector. <laughs> We tracked down a doctor who hasn't been on duty for nine years. But the situation was normal. Situations like this must no longer exist. That is why emphasis must be laid on discipline, on attendance and control. Because one cannot imagine that someone does not work 
but earns a salary. And it is one of the reasons why the hierarchy asks us to hold a meeting for the public sector, presided by the prime minister and head of government. It is to examine these problems. And I have no doubt that we will come out of the meeting with firm directives that we plan to implement at the level of all administrations. Present during the meeting were other administrative authorities headed by the governor of West Region, our Fonka Augustine. The minister was in Bamenda early Tuesday to carry out a similar exercise. Away from St. Austin's Medical Blingo High Institute in Yawonde has officially matriculated its first batch of freshmen into the high institution. The matriculation ceremony, which took place at the Yawonde Municipal Hall, also marked the presence of some dignitaries, as Dolingonde tells us. As an institution founded on the strong moral and religious values, the first ever matriculation convocation of the St. Austin's Medical Bilingual Higher Institute kicked off with a holy mass. Dressed in their white suits, over black pants and well knotted blue toys, the freshmen danced to the rhythms of the choir as they made their way into the ceremonial ground, passing by the proprietress, Dr. Chongwen Bishirin, seated next to the Egyptian Council Deputy Mayor for Yawunde. <laughs> Acting in his capacity as state representative during the event, the deputy mayor for the Yaounde City Council present highlighted the peculiarity of the day while officially declaring the ceremony opened. On a part, Dr. Chongwen Bishirin, CEO and promoter of St. Austin's Medical Bilingual Higher Institute of Yaounde, used the platform to pay tribute to her late husband while emphasizing that her institution's objective is to simplify the complexity and sophisticated of the medical corps to the layman's understanding. I wish to thank my parents, Mr. and Mrs. Tomoe Lele. I wish to thank my late husband, Engineer Yama, Austin Anya Uchi Gozie. St. Austin's once said, the world is a book and those who do not travel read only a page. In the same light, Professor Mbacham Wilfred also had this to say. This is a day that brings a lot of joy, as you must have experienced. And it's also a day so awaited for, because you're starting a new journey, and we all are filled with this immense happiness. And in the presence of the appearance, top administrative authorities from the state and the school, the rest of the student body, amongst other guests, the fresh men raised their hands and voices swearing to abide by the rules and regulations guiding the prestigious institution. I promise to take my studies seriously, carrying out my practical and intensive sessions with the integrity of the The event was also made colorful with a high level of cultural display, including traditional dances, fashion parade, drama, and singing. And by the end of it all, everyone present had enough to eat and drink to call it a successful matriculation ceremony. Thanks, Darling Gandhi. On our cultural page, the Nako Cultural and Development Association held via General Assembly recently in Douala to inaugurate via multi-purpose hall to help them carry out their activities and other events conveniently. Uh, the sons and daughters of Tenako have as objectives to uh, uphold the cultural values of the Opa Bayang and uh, Manua Division in the southwest region of the country. Details with Nora Ka Kebi. Sons and daughters of Tenako Village in Opa Bayang Subdivision of Manua Division in the southwest region converged on Duala to brainstorm the way forward towards achieving developmental projects under the canopy of Internaco Cultural and Development Association, Nkuda. 
The events which brought together the members of the Association of the Douala Branch saw the inauguration of the Nkuda Multipurpose Hall to help them carry out their activities and other events conveniently. The inauguration of the hall was officially done by His Royal Highness Mfo Etang Are, who gave his blessings and urged the Manu people to continue in the spirit of development. It should be noted that the construction of the Nkuda Hall is a project worth 15 million CFA francs, and thanks to the combined efforts and generosity of the internal court and daughters, both at home and abroad, some amount of money was raised through a fundraising. The hall, which is still under construction, needs an additional 5 million francs for its completion. Mr. Bisong McDonald has this to say. We actually started the construction of the hall in 2015, and uh, it was really it was really a gradual process because it entails a lot of you know money. So member has you know sacrifice to contribute this money, which was very difficult. But we thank God, our brothers and sisters had to come in. You know, they put a lot of effort. Uh, like I said in my speech, we could have individuals from Tenaco who could give. Uh, support us at least 700,000 francs cash. So uh, for now we have succeeded to put something like that, though it's not completed. And we just felt that it was necessary for our chief to come and inaugurate uh, the hall. In addition, the President General of Nkuda, Mr. Eta Tabi Emmanuel, feels proud about the association's developmental achievements and expresses satisfaction on behalf of Nkuda for coming this far. Tenaco Culture and Development Association has been doing a lot for the development of our village. We have, uh, through our effort, we have been able to realize the primary school, government primary school of uh, Tenaco. Also, we have also had the GSS in Tenaco. Then the extension of the electrification of our village. Of course, the giant project, the most giant of all, is the construction and realization of our water project, which is flowing, water is flowing everywhere. The inauguration ceremony ended with merrymaking, including a display of the manucultural dance. <laughs> You're watching for 630 edition of Prime News on my on Major Prime. After several months of divination, the Vika Karate is back in a service at Betwa's uh, party house. This was on the occasion of the regional launch of uh, related activities and the graduation uh, session, which uh, took place uh, recently, as our reporter uh, tells us in the report that follows. La Fédération de Karate, the Representation Regional de l'Est, a tenu ce samedi 19 mars 2021 à la maison du parti de Bertois les activités marquant le retour de la discipline dans la région de l'Est. L'occasion faisant le larron, 20 jeunes pratiquants de la discipline sont passés à des démonstrations séances et tenantes afin de passer en grade supérieur. En présence des experts de la fédération venue de Yaoundé et du président régional de la dite fédération, sa majesté Yeto Mekinda Cyril, des grades qui varient de la ceinture jaune à l'orange et de la bleue à la marron, obtenu par la jeune Shekina. C'est un nouveau souffle qui s'ouvre dans la région où la nouvelle équipe dynamique, amenée par le très ambitieux président, veut impulser la pratique du karaté dans une région toujours médaillée au niveau national, malgré la modicité de ses moyens. Les karatékas se comportent un peu comme les politiciens. La véritable difficulté est celle-là qui n'accepte pas euh, la gestion des uns ou des autres. On a toujours l'impression qu'on a envie de rivaliser le karaté. Cet art qui est pourtant noble, autour duquel tout le monde doit se réunir, on est en train de politiser un peu le karaté. C'est la véritable difficulté. Pour l'entraîneur régional de la discipline, l'objectif ici est de se positionner parmi les meilleures disciplines sportives de la région de l'Est et faire du karaté un vivier de médailles dans la région. Je dirais que le karaté pour le moment à l'Est se porte bien et ça s'est toujours porté bien, ça s'est toujours bien porté, je peux le dire ainsi, parce que euh, nous parlons beaucoup dans l'homme, nous parlons dans l'homme, plusieurs personnes ne savent pas. Euh, L'Est à chaque fois euh, que les athlètes sont ils ramènent toujours des médailles. On a été tout à tout à Bamenda, à Nouala, à Yaoundé, à Naoundéré, et presque partout au Cameroun, et on a toujours ramené les médailles, sauf que les médias ne sont pas régulièrement au courant de ce que nous sommes en train de faire. Bon, maintenant qu'il y a une nouvelle dynamique, 
il y a une équipe qui vient d'être mise sur pied. Je pense que cette équipe de la, de la Ligue République ou de la Ligue régionale va s'investir pour que nous faisons encore plus. Donc c'est pour ces raisons-là qu'on a commencé aujourd'hui à faire ce stage régional qui a regroupé les karatékas venant de, de plusieurs pays. D'autant que toutes ces activités se sont déroulées dans le cadre du démarrage effectif de la Fédération Camerounaise de Karaté dans la région de l'Est et la ville d'Abomban accueillera dès le mois d'avril le championnat national des U17. Bon vent à cette fédération. Jean Didier ending the report. Let's now join a topic on thing for sports updates in the French language. D'Afrique des Nations. De janvier 2021 à janvier 2022, la compétition avait été reportée d'un an plus tard suite à l'avènement de la pandémie à coronavirus. Les éliminatoires de cette CAN 2022 au Cameroun se déroulaient déjà en Afrique depuis novembre 2020 pour se terminer d'ici fin mars 2021. Le pays de Samuel Eto'o qualifié d'office parce que, pays organisateur, 23 billets sont déjà obtenus par d'autres pays, faisant un total de 24 équipes dont accueillera le Cameroun du 19 janvier au 6 février 2022. Il s'agit en l'occurrence du Mali qui s'est qualifié avec 10 points, premier du pool A, la Guinée deuxième avec 8 points. Dans le groupe B, le Burkina Faso avec ses 8 points se qualifie et sort premier du pool. L'Ouganda deuxième avec 7 points est aussi qualifié. Dans le groupe C, en première position, le Ghana qui économise 9 points et l'Afrique du Sud 9 points, deuxième au classement, sont promus. Dans le groupe D, l'on retrouve la Gambie et le Gabon le Maroc et la Mauritanie dans le pool E. Dans d'autres groupes, on a également le Mozambique, l'Égypte, le Comore, l'Algérie, le Zimbabwe, le Sénégal, le Congo, la Tunisie, la Guinée équatoriale, la Côte d'Ivoire, Madagascar, le Nigeria et le Bénin. Telles sont les équipes de chaque groupe qualifiées pour la compétition. Les deux dernières journées de qualification se joueront à partir du demain au 30 mars. 2021. Par ailleurs, en raison de la Cannes 2022, au programme du stage des Lions Indomptables, la période allant du 24 au 26 mars 2021 est consacrée aux entraînements au pré à stade Cabour Verdeux à l'extérieur du pays. Ils vont passer leur séjour à l'hôtel Le Vipia dans la ville de Préa. Puis un match amical sera disputé entre le Cameroun et le Cap Vert le 26 mars 2021 au grand stade de Préa Cabo Vert 2 à 16h GMT. Les entraînements qui ont commencé depuis hier à Douala vont s'estomper le 24 date du départ des Lions au Cap Vert. À leur retour, en date du 26 au 31 mars, les entraînements vont poursuivre après la rencontre amicale Cameroun-Rwanda prévue le 30 de ce mois au stade du Japoma, dont son annexe servira de cadre de préparation pour la compétition en vue. With that uh, sports story, we end this edition of uh, Prime News on my media prime. Thanks for being with us. Uh, join us tomorrow, God willing, at 6 30 for another edition of Prime News on my media prime. Lasha Kingsley coordinated the news produced by Ewane Elaine Olinga. My name is Genda Pelgin Blanche King. Stay tuned to my media prime. Prime uh, will be live at uh, 7 p.m. Cameroon time. Enjoy today's uh, fresh edition of Prime R uh, with Kim Leonard and his team of analysts. Good night. Thank you.